we're moving forward here with what we're going to call the BNC2 valving, and it's the second generation of this valving package. And again, the, the whole idea is when the tires touch down, very first time, the, the instant that the tires come down, the shock has to control that mass immediately because if the valving isn't up to par, if it's not up to the challenge, then all this momentum gets out in front of the shock and we blow through the shock much like you might drive through a converter, you know, that's not coupled properly for the kind of power that you make. So the car comes down, you know, blows through the shock, it compresses the coil spring, you know, the coil spring has to release its energy. So then the car is going down the racetrack like this and we're back in that scenario again. So through working with our guys in the shock department, uh, working with their engineering staff at AFCO, we've come up with a, a, a different uh, modified version of this valving package. And so, I think what we see here is uh, a, a way to help all these competitors out there that are trying to go faster, trying to be more competitive. And again, competition is not laying down. So uh, regardless of whether you've got a Chrysler product, a Ford product, or a Chevrolet product, this valving package is adaptable for shocks that are in the field or new shocks that we're building. And so it's, it's really a, a package that we can uh, move through the market to a variety of people. Okay. What does a BNC, what does, what does that mean? I mean, what's, what's it, the initial standard? You know, it, it's, it's a balance control acronym really. Um, uh, and, and we're trying to just, again, help people with a, with a word in the marketplace out there that say, okay, I've got balance control valving. Or if you've ever seen somebody at a racetrack, you know, you're standing along the fence or in the grandstands and you see a car land and, and land smoothly, that car probably had a, a BNC or a bounce control valving package in that thing. Uh, so that's really what we've tried to do is just help people remember what we're trying to do here. Yeah. I know it's a delicate uh, scenario to keep get your wheel spin to get a good launch and not get the nose of the car in, in the air really hard. So yeah, a lot of cars have to wheelie and, you know, because they're, they're a, a nose heavy car, you know, a, iron headed big block or aluminum headed big block, anything with nose weight has to get, you know, the crank center lined up, has to get weight moving to the back. Uh, the problem with that then becomes now what goes up must come down. And, right. you know, we all know that. And so when you've got that to work with, you've got to be able to, to grab that thing and, and, and slow all that mass down. Now on the BNC valving shocks we have for wheelie control, they're, they're double adjustable. Is that correct? Double adjustable. Absolutely. That's really, I think most of the folks that are, into that style of car really need a double adjustable shock. On the rebound side up here at the top, um, you know, you want to be able to control the rate of extension, the rate of rise. Mm -hmm. Some racetracks are going to hook a little better than others, but down here on the bottom on the compression adjustment, that's really where the magic happens again for these, these BNC style shocks. You want to be able to dial in just how firm the car needs to land. I mean, it, it doesn't need to land so hard that it, it, it shakes the steering wheel or compresses the sidewall of the front tire. You just need to have it cycle and come right back to ride height one time. Yeah, so basically just in layman terms, you're on your rebound side. That's actually controlling how quick the front end comes up and how long it stays up, correct? Correct. And then on the compression side, when the car comes off, the wheelie comes back down. That's controlling how hard it hits the, the ground and right. and uh it takes the bounce out of the car. Absolutely. The compression okay. side takes the bounce out of the, out of the car. Sure okay. Enough. Now, can you over adjust these? Can you get like too much compression and cause a bounce or not enough and let the, that's when your hitters and your oil pan take a hit? Yeah. If you don't have the compression stiff enough, that's when the front end cycles and we start to do damage to the, the suspension components, maybe hit the, the, the oil pan, the headers off the racetrack, something like that. Um, theoretically, uh, you can have the compression too firm. And it comes down and it, you, you'll see the sidewall of the tire, you know, compress. I guess it goes this way and this way. But, um, you know, for the most part, I think we'll find a, a real firm compression is, is helpful in a lot of cases. And if you think about just GM cars, because there's a lot of them out there, that A-arm suspension has motion ratio working against the shock. The shock's not out by the, the ball joint or the right. center line of the tire. It's inboard. So now you, you've got some problems here to, to overcome. The shocks are speed sensitive. The faster you move them, the more firm they can get, stiffer they can get. But if you're mounted inboard, now we're not moving at the same rate as the wheel. So now the shock's not seeing the same velocity as, as maybe the tire is going to see. So you have to compensate. 
inside the shock for that because you, you've got to, again, be able to get the right damping rate to control this, this mass. And most of the time, these shocks in these front ends of these cars are pretty short. Okay, so right. in, the, in the instance of a, a G body or an A body or an F body, we may only have four inches of total shock travel available. So now you've got to control 15, 1600 pounds and stop it from going down, hitting the, the bump stop and then cycling with only about four inches of travel. So it's, there's a lot going on right here. There's a lot of internal pressure. There's a lot of control going on right there. Now these can be built for different types of scenarios, correct? I mean, if you've got a, say a 2,800 pound car with a turbo, or you've got a 3,500 pound car with a, an iron big block nitrous motor, you mm -hmm. can valve these shocks to for those type of conditions, correct? We can, and and I think what we'll find uh, as as the the market finds it, the BNC two valving has a real broad range of adjustment. I mean, there's there's 24 clicks of adjustment down here at the bottom. So if you're a 2,700 pound car, you may not be at full stick. Right. But if you're a 3,600 pound super stock B automatic Camaro with all that weight on the nose, and you're in good air and you're on a good racetrack, and you've got fresh rubber out back, we may be full tight to try to control that thing so that when it lands, it sticks the landing. And I mean, that's that's really what we're trying to do here. Is we're trying to stick the landing so the driver can then find where he's at on the racetrack, find the competitor, and make the right decision at the other end of the racetrack.